Welcome to the product video about Aptin workflow. My name is Anke. I'm your host for this video. In our short agenda, we will first talk about what is Aptin workflow, why you should use it, how you use it. We're doing a quick demo, and then in the conclusion, what is workflow in a nutshell? What is Aptin workflow? Aptin Workflow illustrates your business processes in your Business Central database. You can set up an unlimited number of workflow templates, and later on the system will prove if a workflow template is matching one of your business cases, and if yes, it will create live workflows. Each workflow can consist of minimum one to-do or 100 to-dos. Doesn't matter, it depends from your business cases, and each of the to-dos is linked to a specific responsible team or employee. Each to-do has also a duration, one day, seven days, three months, depending from the to-do and your business case. The Epstein workflow can support your complex business processes, especially decision-making processes for i principle processes in your Business Central database. It works on all Business Central X navigation tables. It doesn't matter if it's an add-on or if it's an industry solution, a different app from a third-party vendor or your own uh, tables. Additionally, to the normal workflows with to-do types, you can set up also workflows which step in in a transaction routine like release or posting in Business Central. They can break postings and releases depending from the setup, like you missed the purchaser code in your purchase order and you can't post or release this then. So it's just a setup, no coding at all. Why you should use Aptin workflow? So first of all, there's no customization needed. You can Install the app in your sandbox, in your Business Central environment. You can set up your workflows, whatever you would like on each table you have in your database. It's ready lesser than one hour and no standard Business Central objects are touched. It's easy to set up for every uh, key user. It helps with some wizards in the database and you can start from scratch in less than one hour. how you should use it. So we have one product, one app, but different to-dos and different workflow types. We already talked about the workflows with the to-dos, but we have also the workflows which step in a transaction, stop a booking or posting, stop the release, give some warnings or error messages out from scratch just about the setup. There's no coding. Here we can give you also some examples about the workflows and where you can use them. Master data management. So typically you have a lot of master data in your business central databases, like items, vendors, new employees, doesn't matter. It uh, helps with the workflow to create the correct uh, master data for your system. It supports your order processing. It helps in the invoice approval processes certification management, claim handling, whatever you would like to think about, uh, workflow is your product. Just give you one example about a workflow with to-dos. So we create a new purchase order in the system. We have a condition behind this workflow template that we say, okay, we only need a live workflow if the total amount of this purchase order is higher than $5,000 or euro. If this condition, condition is met, the system will automatically create a new workflow, a live workflow from this workflow template. Our live workflow consists of, in this case, three to-dos. To-do one is check relevant fields. To-do two is approval by the purchaser. And if both these to-dos, to-do one and two, are closed and done, then it's this first step is starting approval by team manager. Each to-do is linked to a specific employee or team with a duration of one day, three days, or two days. Workflow within a routine doesn't have any tasks or to-dos. 
So this workflow template consists just of a setup of a break condition. And the setup of a break condition is in this case, if the purchase code is missing in your purchase order, then you can't post. So if you try to post and you miss the purchase code, the system let you know via a message, you can't post because it's missing the purchase code. Please enter the purchase code when you're doing this, then you are allowed to post and nothing happens. Now we will take over to the demo database and we will see in Business Central 18 what we can do with our workflows. So let's start with the user perspective for Epstein workflow. This is the normal sales order processor role center. And you can see already here that there is some additional information about the workflow. This is automatically created from the app when you install the app. So you can see my workflows and new customer workflow, for example, or you have here a bunch of new to-do uh, to activities where I can see as a user from the workflow system, I have 200, more than 200 waiting to-dos. I have 61 overdue to-dos. Um, so I should start as a user now to fulfill my to-dos. So first of all, I click on overdue and I will see then the list of the whole bunch of my to-dos which are overdue. I can see this on the status uh, picture on the front. I see the information about the workflow, the information about this to-do, check mandatory fields for the table customer. I see some information about the data set behind, customer number and the customer name. And I can also see the to-do type field examination, and this is linked to myself, and this is the starting date for this to-do. So it's a couple of days gone and already should be closed 11th of May, uh, but it hasn't. So if I'm interested in this to-do and what is the data behind, I can have a look on the data, show source, and the system will automatically open the customer card in this case. Elkhorn Airport, I can have a look to the data. Okay, I'm now informed about the stuff and I can go back to my to-do list. If I'm interested in a total workflow, because my to-do itself is just a small part probably of the total workflow, I can go to workflow expand view and just have a look where I'm here in. And I see this is my to-do. I'm the first one in this case, check mandatory fields and all the other to-do is after myself waiting until my to-do is finished. But this gives me a quick overview about the whole process. Another nice view is the visual view because in the other it's just a more line by line, but I can't see the total dependencies from one to-do to another. In this case, I can see this is the first to-do. Then after first to-do, if this is closed, the second to-do will start. And if the second to-do is closed, a to-do group will start and three parallel to-dos has to work on from different teams or employees. And after this whole bunch of to-dos, the to-do group itself is closed, then to-do six in this case will follow. So this gives you a more nicer uh, overview about how your business process looks like in your real life. But back to our to-do uh, list, when we would like to start and fulfill the field examination to-do, you can click here on field examination or examine fields. I can't click on manual complete because it's not the to-do type in this case. So I click on examine fields. And I can see which fields should be filled out in which case. So we can see on the very left side here status. And the first four lines are fulfilled correctly. So there's a tick here. And we're just missing the credit limit. The credit limit is not fil fulfilled in this case. And this is why our to do is open. So we enter here 5000 euro. And now the system has automatically entered the tick here and this closes our to do in the background and then it's step by step. It's going to the next part. Great, so that's the user overview. Another option is that we have in our huge bunch of lists here, 
we have a manual completion to do as well. If we would like to enter this, we can open the to-do card itself. Click on card. Now we have the information also about the workflow. We have the information about the description, attached credit application. We have the duration itself. We have information about the customer. We see the information about the workflow on the right side. We have here more information about our to do itself. We see some responsibility. If we would have more comments, more information about that to do, they would be entered here. And now we can say, OK, that's fine. We will manually complete this to do. Yes. And now on the right side, you can see here it's green. So our to do is done. On the left side on the card, you can see it's closed. It's completed by myself. And that's the closing date. Uh, it's a work date from my database. Uh, but this is a quite important option for business process managers and team leaders probably uh, later today or later in, the, in this business process because they are probably interested who has changed or closed one to do on which date. So perfect, that's the view from a user perspective. Now we can switch over to the perspective for an administrator for Aptin workflow. For this part, we will close this demo here and switch over. So that's a view about a workflow administrator. A workflow administrator typically is one, two persons in a company. They can create templates for workflow. They can change templates for workflow. They can see all workflows, all live workflows in the system and uh, also to do all the to do's and can help uh, the t different teams or employees if they're missing something or uh, they get confused about something, uh, they can always help. So we can see in our demo database, we have 59 workflows. 59 workflows are already critical. Um, and we see the total amount of to-dos here. So it looks a bit like the same on the sales order processor card with the to-do uh, activities steps, but we have also here more information about workflows. So if we would like to create a new workflow, as the administrator is normally doing, we can start on a setup, start with a reference time, because we have decided probably up front, we would like to create a new workflow on the vendor card. So we create a new reference type. That's for table 23, the vendor, and it's for page 26. This is the only link for the system that Aptin Workflow is recognizing table 23. I have to check in my daily batch job if this is a has workflow templates and if yes, if one of the workflow templates will match to a specific new vendor in this case. So no coding at all. This is just a setup where we link the business central database and all tables with our Aptin Workflow. We can enter here some keyword definitions if we would like to have some information about the vendor. So let's say we would like to have the information about the name and probably we would also like to know about the, the city. So you can pick all the fields from the table and give these information to your users later on. That's perfect. So now we're going back and start with the templates. We start with a to-do template. We create a new one on table 23. This is workflow 250. The description is check. Mandatory fields. We can give here more information for the user, please. Insert all necessary info. The next step is we decide who is responsible for that to do. It could be a team or an employee. 
So let's see. We have here the accounts team. That's pro that's great. We decide when should this to do start. This to do can start when the workflow starts here. And we enter here a duration for three days. So our accounts team has three days of time to fulfill and to close this to do later. We can also decide that this to do will not start with the workflow. It could be also starting from a different yeah, date field on our vendor card, on our purchase order, depending where our workflow is created on. Or we decide another to do group or another to do has to be closed before and then our to do will start. So we are very flexible here in the setup for your business cases. But in this case, we will link this to the workflow start. So the system will check our new vendors. When a new vendor is inserted in the system, the system will pick up our workflow template and will create a new live workflow. And then it's our to-do check mandatory fields will start as well. What's the criteria, the to-do type in this case? I'll close that a bit. So we have different options here. Manual completion, we already mentioned on the user part. It's just to set a tick mark and say, yeah, I'm done with this to-do and the to-do will close by the system. Date monitoring is a quite nice uh, to-do type. If you have different to-do uh, date fields, like on the certification management, you have an expiry date and you have the work date from today or the server date, and you can uh, compare both dates. And if one of the dates is far closer to the other one, uh, then you can create a new to-do like the date monitoring. It's quite nice uh, if you would like to compare different date fields. Field examination is this wonderful to-do type when you want to have perfect and very nice master data where you can set up different fields which you would like to check. They have to be filled out or you give uh, also the information what should be filled out and how. And then this is another part. Decision to do is a very complex and quite nice and helpful to do type if you would like to have approval processes in your system and the workflow can help you with the decision to do type. In our case, we would like to set up field examination. And now we have to, to give the information what kind of fields and which fields we would like to fill out. So we create a new condition. We give also this condition some information. Description is probably check fields. And then we decide which fields we would like to check. First of all, we could check probably mm, the name for sure. Quite important. Should be not empty. And what else? Mm, maybe the city. And also the city should be not empty. Perfect. So now we link our table condition for field examination with our to-do template. And our to-do template is finished. The next step is we create a new template for workflow itself. We click on new. It's for table 23. Workflow should be 250. Description is new vendor workflow. And we would like to have a new vendor workflow only for US vendors. So in this case, we would like to create only a new workflow for US uh, vendors. So we have to create a new use condition. New. New. This is also workflow 250, condition 20, only for US vendors. 
and we link again the field, the country code. Let's see where the country code is. I'll give it here. Here, country and region code. And the filter is in this case not, not empty, it's US. We link our table condition for workflows to our workflow template. And now we link our already created to do template to our workflow. Mandatory fields. Perfect. So the next step is then we create a new vendor. And this vendor is based in US. Let's leave it like that. So we have created a new vendor, it's called Aptin, and Aptin is based in US. We're going back to our role center, and we will see that there is a new workflow now created by the system automatically, no coding at all. So back on our role center, we see now we have now 60 workflows in total, and one of the last workflows, it's our new vendor workflow. So we're going, to the bottom and we see now we have here a new created workflow orange now to do new vendor workflow for the vendor table keyword is aptin with a starting date from today on and an eight date or the tw uh, 20s we can here also click on expand view we see we have a very tiny workflow here with just one to do check mandatory fields the field examination is linked to the accounting team. We can open here from here as well the to-do card. If we would like to, we can examine fields. We can enter the city here, what is missing. The city is now included and our to-do is finished. We can have a look here. We see it's green, it's done. Perfect, our workflow is also be done in the next update. So we're going back to the first step. We can update the status quickly and it's gone here from our list and it's archived now. And later on, we can always reopen this workflow if we change also again the city or missing the city or delete the city. The system will automatically check also the archived workflows and reopen them if it's necessary. That should be all for now in our short product demo. We're going back to the uh, PowerPoint slides for a uh, short conclusion. As a conclusion, this is the Aptin workflow in a nutshell. People use it for data-driven decisions, validation of business processes, order processing, date monitoring. There's a huge bunch of ideas where you can use it. Why you need it? So be, people need it for master data management to have perfect master data in your system, reduce turnaround times, increase scalability, reduce errors, especially for master data, reduce training costs because it's quickly to learn and it's safe time in the daily work and prioritize and help the users in their daily business.